Coming up next on We Are Marshall Today, a bid to get more information in less time. We'll have details on our national competition. Plus, spring football kicks off. A glimpse of the season is straight ahead. These stories and more up next on We Are Marshall Today. Hi and welcome to We Are Marshall Today. I'm Leah Edwards. And I'm Dan Hollis. Google is the most popular internet search engine in the world. But now, Leah, it's the one searching. That's right, Dan. Google is looking to test its super fast experimental fiber in one or two lucky cities across the country. This was the early sound of the information superhighway. When introduced in the 1980s to the general public, dial-up modem was the quickest connection available. But if the city of Huntington wins a gig with Google, dial-up modems will be history. Google is the world's largest online search engine, and it's offering ultra-high-speed broadband network to one or more cities across the country. Huntington wants to be one of those. This is a fantastic opportunity to set the city of Huntington um, apart from other municipalities in the state and this hemisphere, as Mayor Wolf talked about. It would allow us to be competitive um, in education, um, in our medical community, as well as the business community, and provides a higher level of service for our citizens. When you bring together the private sector, the educational sector, uh, the, the public, and they all come together, and they're all in unison, and... Uh, uh, and I think they'll see that. I think they'll be able to, Google will be able to see that they were, we're in a cooperative mode, all working together, and we can offer, I think, what they're looking for. Huntington, Cabell County Schools, and Marshall University are working together to lobby Google to land its fiber project here. The high-speed fiber project would provide the city or cities with internet connection speeds up to 100 times faster than what's usually available to most Americans. I think when you look at the importance of the community and uh, what we're doing here in, in Huntington to Marshall University, this is very, very important to Marshall University. It's important to our ability to recruit faculty. Uh, it's uh, important to our ability to retain faculty, but as importantly, it's important to our community to be able to grow and develop our community and uh, take advantage of the opportunities that uh, this type of connectivity can bring to our, our area of the state. Several other West Virginia cities are also vying for the project. Google's website says a decision will be made sometime this year, but there's no specific date. Joining us now to talk more about the Google Fiber Project is Marshall's Chief Technology Officer, Alan Taylor. Thanks for being here, Alan. Thanks for having me, Leah. Um, this just sounds like an incredible project. How did Marshall get involved in it? Well, it certainly is an incredible project. It's um, something that Google announced a couple of months ago, and uh, we've been working with Google for several years on a variety of projects. Um, this uh, telecast actually is done on uh, a Google subsidiary, YouTube, and um, our accounts there as well as projects that we're doing with Google uh, sort of alerted us to it. Um, we alerted President Kopp the day that it was announced and um, immediately he saw the value both to Marshall and the community and uh, sent a letter to um, uh, Mayor Wolf and uh, almost immediately Mayor Wolf responded. Uh, we had um, several meetings where uh, we offered the university support to the city and um, that resulted in what I think is a very good proposal that the city has, uh, has put forward with Google. How will um, the Marshall community benefit from the project if indeed Huntington is awarded the fiber project? Well, as, as Dr. Kopp mentions, high-speed networking um, is the new economy. It's, it, uh, it brings economic uh, development, which uh, anything that benefits the city benefits the university. Uh, the university is, as you know, a commuter university. We only have about 25% of our students on campus, and they benefit from high-speed networking here on campus. Uh, the residence halls have gigabit uh, into each residence hall. But as they migrate off campus, um, they lose that ability. And some of the things that we can do here on campus, once it's extended out into the community, help students, faculty, staff, uh, our consultation with local industry, uh, it, it would just be a phenomenal boom. Mm -hmm. I, I have to tell you, um, 
I'm wondering how, how fast is fast? I mean, it says, uh, from what I've heard, it'll be 100 times faster. That's really hard for me to get my arms around 100 times faster than instantaneous. <laughs> <laughs> so explain that to me a little bit. Well, you may be just a little spoiled since you do have <laughs> faster access here on campus than, than what the typical individual has in their household. Um, when you look at um, uh, networking, networking has continued to increase in speed back from the dial-up days where um, you, could, you were really limited on what you could do to text-oriented material. Uh, you couldn't think about uh, pictures or graphics and certainly not video. Up through today's world where we have somewhere between 3 megabits and 5 megabits in the standard uh, home. Um, those limitations really limit some of the things that we can still do. This telecast, for instance, is, is being uh, recorded in high definition, 1080p. At those home rates, uh, it pretty much consumes that connection, the 3 to 5 megabits, just to watch a single telecast. In a four-person home, um, someone watching this telecast will impact everyone else that uh, in the home that might be doing uh, homework or uh, working and consulting or um, uh, telecommuting or other things that uh, higher speed technology will enable. So it's that composite bandwidth into the home that gigabit would really enable uh, not just economic development but improvements in medicine as the city uh, was stating and improvements in local government really communicating with the population. Um, in clearly rich media is is what uh, gigabit ethernet would really provide. What do you think the chances are of, of Huntington getting this project? Well, um, we did not know as we initiated with the city how many entries there'd be. Um, a few hours before the deadline, uh, Huntington had already submitted their proposal and there were 600 communities that had submitted it at that time. Uh, by the deadline, there were 1,100 communities. So we're one in 1,100 communities that are competing for it. Um, the university uh, assisted uh, the city by providing uh, some data that would be difficult for many municipal governments uh, to get. And I'm sure other universities have done the same in their communities. Um, the city's put together a, a very, very good proposal. Um, we've um, uh, used university facilities to assist in communicating with the 50,000 or so accounts uh, that we have with the university. So uh, we think there was uh, a fair uh, community exposure um, that uh, resulted in, in Google seeing that there's support in the community. Uh, K-12 education, uh, Bill Smith um, did the same with Cabell County Schools. And um, we, we think that not only do they have a solid proposal, but uh, also an indication of support in the community. Um, the university being here um, perhaps assists the city uh, in showing that there's demand already uh, for a successful deployment by Google. And um, we don't really know their criteria and what they will uh, uh, look at more, but um, uh, we think that uh, we have a pretty good chance. Well, we certainly hope so, and I know um, from, from the website there's not really a definitive date for when they're going to make this choice, just sometime in the, next, in the next year. Let me switch real quick on you and just say, um, ask you about what projects Marshall has going on with IT before we end. Anything coming down the pipeline that, that the Marshall community will see? Well, there are, there are over 100 uh, current IT projects, and, uh, but the ones that relate to this Google Fiber, uh, as you know, in the last several months, we've joined Internet 2, which is a high-speed connection, a gigabit connection into a network that uh, sort of parallels the commodity Internet. It's made for researchers and for um, a growing amount of uh, medical research and clinical medicine. As part of that, we're uh, finishing up this summer, actually, a fiber ring in Huntington that links the university, the School of Medicine, Cabell Huntington and St. Mary's, uh, where we're installing our own fiber from an FCC grant. Um, that's part of the West Virginia Telehealth Association. So that's underway. That's going to be a 10 gigabit ring, 10 times faster than what would be going to the home. So that's a very exciting project. 
Um, another major project that is being enabled by Internet2 is an EPSCOR grant from the National Science Foundation where we're installing a uh, high-performance computing cluster uh, that's going to be used here on campus uh, to train faculty in using some of the NSF resources uh, that are called the TerraGrid. Um, uh, the College of Information Technology and Engineering is, is very excited about that. It's enabling a visualization project that they're completing. That sounds very exciting. Come a long way since dial-up, haven't we? We have. We certainly have. In a short period of time. Thank you very much for being here with us today. Thank you again for having me. You're welcome. Coming up next on We Are Marshall Today, spring football practice is underway. We'll take you there after this break. At Marshall University, you can get all the information and resources you need right at your fingertips, from schedules to flexible courses to friendly student resources. From the MyMU portal, you can search for classes to fit your needs, register, and even pay tuition all with the click of a button. But that's not all you can do within MyMU. MyMU also provides a list of key resources for students. Convenient and affordable, MU Online offers a variety of class choices to fit your needs. Access e-courses or supplemental materials from MU Online. MU Online also offers virtual classrooms where you can participate in class from any location with an internet connection. At Marshall University, we make information, resources, and service a priority. Through MyMU and MU Online, you have all the resources you need right at your fingertips. My company's downsizing. I thought it'd be in my best interest to go back to school. But as busy as I am, commuting was not going to be an option. But with MU Online, I can take classes anywhere. Nationally accredited, affordable, convenient. MU Online. Last month, more than 60 Joan C. Edwards School of Medicine students found out in a matter of seconds where they will be completing their medical training. It's called the National Match and graduating medical students across the country participate. Match day is when students receive letters from residency programs from which they've been selected. We have a number who have uh, matched in highly competitive specialties like radiology, otolaryngology, orthopedics, um, emergency medicine. Those are very highly competitive specialties and we've done very well this year. Students rank their top residency choices and schools are also rank their top choices. The outcome is determined by the National Residency Matching Program. At the stroke of noon on the same day across the country, med students all find out where they will be doing their training. Medical research took the spotlight recently at the School of Medicine's annual research day. The event allows medical students, residents, and faculty researchers a venue to show their findings. More than 70 research projects were displayed. Marshall University has received another financial shot in the arm. Brick Street Insurance Company presented a $50,000 gift to Marshall, which will be used to further the development of an insurance and risk management program. According to Marshall officials, there are no other programs like it in the state. Mark your calendar now for Marshall University's annual Alumni Weekend set to begin Friday, April 23rd. There are dozens of activities planned, including the 73rd Annual Alumni Banquet and the President's Social Gathering. Also, the Class of 1960 will mark a milestone with its 50-year celebration. And later on Saturday, of course, kickoff at 4 p.m. for the annual Green and White Game. Later in the show, we'll talk with head football coach Doc Holliday about what's ahead. If you're a golf fan and you can attend one of the country's most prestigious events in the country and help out Marshall University at the same time, the MU Alumni Association and the Foundation are selling entry badges to the Greenbrier Classic scheduled for July at the famous resort in White Sulphur Springs. 30% of the entry badge fees purchased before April 30th will be donated to Marshall. For more information, contact either the Alumni Association or the Foundation. 
It's springtime and that means our campuses are buzzing with activity. One of those included this scenario a few weeks ago as the Marshall community marked Criminal Justice Awareness Week. The demonstration with police dogs attracted quite a bit of attention. Huntington Police Officer Levi Livingston says the traditional police dog is a German Shepherd, although there are a couple of other breeds used as well. They basically have three different dif disciplines, which would be your uh, apprehension that we just did a de demonstration on, a uh, narcotic detection, and also tracking. Uh, so if uh, something happens, we can use them to track down criminals or even lost kids. Livingston says it takes about six months to a year to adequately train a police dog, although the dog is continuously learning throughout his career. As we told you earlier in the show, Marshall's annual spring game is set for Saturday, April 24th. Spring practice started a few weeks ago with new coach Doc Holliday on the sidelines. More in this report from the voice of the Thundering Herd, Steve Cotton. The weather was great and the tempo upbeat as the Marshall University Thundering Herd kicked off the first day of spring practice under the direction of new head coach Doc Holliday. Holliday and his staff of nine assistant coaches ran drills and watched players as they sized up who and what is available for the 2010 season. Tight end Lee Smith is one of the veteran returnees and he says the first day of practice was good. It went good. We have a lot of things we need to improve on, but uh, you always do the first day. Nobody's as good as they can be the first day. We're looking forward to being a lot better than we were today, 30 days from now. But as a group on offense and defense, I think it was great. Linebacker Mario Harvey agrees, saying the team seems to be adjusting to Holiday's new system. When it first came out, it was kind of rough, you know, because we weren't expecting the tempo. But we picked it up and everybody's starting to buy on. So everybody coming as a big family and coming together as a family. Both Harvey and Smith are excited about the upcoming season and give a lot of credit to Coach Holiday. Coach Holiday let us know that no one would practice harder than us. And when the first game comes, we will be the most invested team, and that's what he said from day one, and he continues to push us and make us the best we can be. And uh, that, that's the main difference right now is he will not let us be outworked. Uh, it feels great. You know, uh, once you start get a big attempt to accomplish, you're going to always be remembered. Uh, that's my first team. I'm a part of a new era, and you always can come back home and, be, and tell everybody that and tell your grandchildren. Spring practice culminates with the annual Green and White game, April 24th. And if you're interested in season tickets, they're available by calling the Marshall Ticket Office at 1-800-THE-HERD or log on to HerdZone.com. For We Are Marshall Today, I'm Steve Cotton. Joining us now to talk more about the spring game and about his new job here at Marshall University is head football coach Doc Holliday. Doc, thanks for being here. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate you having me. First of all, I guess the question is, what's it been like your first couple months here on the job? No, oh, it's been great. You know, we first start off by hiring, hiring a great staff. I uh, thought we had a great class as far as recruiting goes. Uh, had, a, had a super. We were excited about our winter condition, our off-season program. Now we're moving into spring ball, which we're just getting started. So it's been a lot of fun, a lot of excitement, and just the support we've gotten throughout the state of West Virginia, the entire country from Marshall fans has been great. Well, your family moved here with you, obviously. What's the transition been like for them? Well, you know, it's, I grew up 20 minutes from here, Dan, so it was really pretty easy, to be honest. I had a farm that I grew up on down in Hurricane, West Virginia. I still have a home down there that I've had for years. And, and so we started out uh, living there and then moved over by Ritter Park, but uh, my family's from here. I spent a lot of time here and a lot of people from this area, which made the transition really smooth. Well, you, uh, you came from WVU. Have you been given much grief by those folks? Yeah, not at all. You know, I had great friends up there. I've got great experiences up there. But those people knew that, that, that my goal uh, you know, was to be a head football coach, and they knew that uh, you know, that was my ultimate goal, and they've had just great support from the Mike Pushkars to the Perry Petropolises to all the people at West Virginia have been awful, awful good to me. They've been nothing but supportive. Well, that's, your, name is, your nickname is Doc Holliday. Uh, How would you get the nickname? I had a coach who, when I was playing college ball, named Joe Pender, who now happens to be the offensive line coach for Alabama with Nick. And uh, we were out of practice one day. He didn't know my name, so he started calling me Doc in 1975, I think it was, and it stuck. Um, tell me a little bit about how you uh, fit uh, your role as, as a football coach. It's not just football, is it? There's well, something to do with academics and there's all There's no that. question. I mean, number one, you know, it's – you know, football is just part of it, and uh, in order to be a, to win championships, which is what we talk about doing all the time, you know, we got kids got to live their lives off the field. They got to do the right things off the field. They got to do the right things in the classroom because there's no doubt in my mind that there's a direct correlation between how you live your life off the field, what you do in the classroom. Uh, it relates exactly to what happens on the football field. If we can depend on if we can depend on our guys off the field, we can we can count them on the field. And that's we're working extremely hard 
to make sure our kids do that. I think in the last uh, the entire semester with 87 guys, I think we've had eight missed classes. Mm. So, you know, our kids are starting to buy in. Are we there totally yet? Absolutely not. We've got a long way to go to change this culture to get where we can constantly win championships. We'll work extremely hard to get that done. Well, let's talk a little bit about football. Uh, how's spring practice been going? It's been good. You know, again, we, we, our kids got to learn how to practice. I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's very uh, – I had a pro scout not long ago tell me, Doc, he said – I said, tell me what separates the, the great teams from the average teams. He goes, what if you go around the country and you watch people practice, the three best practice teams in America are Florida, Alabama, and Delaware. And it just happens to be there's, uh, they've won about five national titles in the last five years. So, you know, there is a, you know, it's important that uh, the practice tempo, we learn how to practice, we practice hard all the time. And, you know, I've got great kids. I've got kids that have bought in, but they got to learn exactly how to practice and what they got to do to go win championships. And we're working our tail off to get that done. Well, how do you, how do you structure your, your practices? Well, they're all organized, of course. You have five-minute periods. We go about 25 periods. We're out there about two and a half hours. And they're all, it's all very organized. Uh, you know, I've, got, I've hired nine great coaches. And not only are they great coaches, but they're great teachers. And, you know, they do a great job in the, in the classroom as far as the film study and the, the actual installs and all that are concerned. And then once we get on the field, we just work extremely hard to make sure our kids are playing as fast and as hard as they can. Is there a way that, that fans and students can come watch practice? That's open to the public. You know, it's, uh, I think that was a thing that one of the, uh, the common themes that I got when I, when I got the job was, can we go watch practice? Absolutely, it's their team. I mean, this is your team. This is our fan. This is our students' team. Our, uh, you know, the fans, all the Marshall fans throughout the country, it's their team. And when they're in town, they're welcome to come watch practice. We'd love to have them around. The spring game is going to be uh, it's going to be big this year. Talk a little bit about it. Yeah, I think number one, anytime you've got uh, such great players coming back, you got Randy Moss and Chad Pennington, and Byron Leftridge, and and John Wade. I mean, what else can you say? I mean, those guys are all going to be there. Uh, it's it's just exciting to have them come back. Uh, they're all Hall of Famers. They've all been great players, not only here at Marshall but also in the NFL, and they're the face of Marshall football, or a lot of the faces of Marshall football, and to have that, and, and on top of that, you know, Chad, and they organize a concert for afterwards, so, you know, it's going to be a sunny day, it's going to be nice, and uh, we're excited for the, you know, the fans to show up, and just show, you know, let's, let's show all the recruits and people throughout the country how much Marshall football means to this state, and to this program, to the fans. Well, the football season starts with, with two big games, uh, Ohio State and, and WVU. Uh, it's a tough start, but how do you envision preparing, preparing your team for that? Well, we'll never, we don't prepare any different any time. You know, I've, always, I've always been a true believer, and I, I truly believe that the most prepared, most invested team always wins. So it's our job as players and as coaches to make sure that we do everything we possibly can to make sure we are the most prepared and also the most invested. So that will never change whether we play Ohio State or whoever, or West Virginia or whoever. We're going to prepare the same way all the time. Our guys and our coaches understand that preparation never stops until we kick that ball off at whatever time, I guess, 8 o'clock versus Ohio State. So from this point on, we'll work extremely hard to do it. And that being said, we got a challenging schedule. We open up with Ohio State. We come back with West Virginia. we got seven straight bowl teams. I think I'd, all that tells me is there needs to be a sense of urgency around that office. I mean, from secretaries to trainers to SIDs to everybody else, we better make sure we don't leave any rocks unturned so we, have, so we are prepared and we can handle this and, and be prepared for that schedule we have ahead of us. But also, as we're talking about fans, I mean, they mm -hmm. got what they right. want. They got a great schedule. They got uh, you know a lot of great people coming here to play. So let's make sure we sell a bunch of tickets and get there for the spring game. And only for the spring game, let's sell that place out for the season too. Well, um, you have a pretty cool event coming up uh, this summer. It's the Doc, Holliday, Doc Holiday uh, uh, Fantasy Football Camp. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, that's the thing that we're just going to have a lot of fun with uh, whoever wants to come. I mean, we got the guys coming. We're going to. We're going to talk a little football early in the morning, uh, offense and defense. We're going to put them on a bus, and we're going to head to Hurricane to Sleepy Hollow Golf Club. We're going to play some golf, then we're going to finish up with dinner with my house at my house down in Hurricane, and we're going to have a great cookout. We have some great music and just have a good time. And But for, I, want, I want these people to be able to really get an inside look of what, what our football program is all about, get to meet these great coaches that I have and get to spend some time with them, get to know them, not only as coaches, but as people. I think they'll enjoy themselves. We're looking forward to it. How do, how do people get involved with it? Just call the football office, call, talk to Mark or, or talk to Zach or talk to Sean or anybody there, Mark Gale, and uh, we'll be happy to sign them. They better hurry, though. The slots are, getting, are filling up quick. All right, Coach. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. And before we go to break today, let's meet another member of the Marshall University alumni family. Leslie Simmons is a 2009 Marshall University graduate with a bachelor's degree in business marketing. She lives in Barbersville area and is employed by the Marshall University Alumni Association. Leslie Simmons, another member of the Marshall University alumni family, spreading the word about the herd.
the classroom straight to your computer. I teach international marketing online 100%. I conduct this class from my office, from my home, and it is 24-7 available to students across the country. I would say this has been one of the most challenging and rewarding experiences, not only for me, for my students as well. Nationally accredited, affordable, convenient, MU Online. My name is Emily, and in seven years, I'll be an alcoholic. Hi. I'll start drinking in eighth grade, but my parents won't really notice because I'll do okay in school and everything will seem okay but everything won't be okay. Kids who drink before age 15 are five times more likely to have alcohol problems when they're adults. So start talking before they start drinking. Just 10 years ago, Dan, classes in gaming were virtually unheard of. What we're talking about is instruction in the development and programming of computer games. Recently, Marsh University was recognized for its game design program. Professor Brian Morgan tells us more. My name is Brian Morgan and what I'm teaching this semester is a class called uh, 3D Game Development and we're teaching students how to make games uh, for deployment to the Xbox. Uh, when I first started in college I was actually an engineering major and I decided it wasn't what I wanted so I was undecided for a while and uh, in the search of actually exploring um, the major to go into I came across game development and I actually t I contacted Brian Morgan and he uh, gave me information I needed and I thought I'd give it a shot and it's where I'm at right now. One of the nice things about this program is that it combines classes with the art department so that you still get that artistic, creative side of things. I still take some art classes. I'm in a 3D modeling class right now. The first two years, you'll, you'll do nothing but programming. You'll learn all about C++, you'll learn about C Sharp, you'll learn about the proper techniques of object-oriented programming design. You'll learn all of these things outside of gaming to build you a good foundation for, so that when you do touch the code for gaming, you're, you're just popping in ideas. You're, you're placing ideas into an engine, you're using some, some pre-developed code, and you're turning that pre-developed code or pre-developed engine into your own ideas. Programming, I mean, it's still kind of confusing to me, but it's really fun enjoying. Um, I used to be, I, as a kid, I grew up like, doing Photoshop and like art design. And um, I used to compete with my friends trying to like Photoshop pictures. So I thought doing graphics and computer programming would actually be an enjoyable career and something fun to learn in college. I've always wanted to um, get involved with either characters or some kind of landscapes or something like that. For a while, I wanted to I considered being an, arch an architect. Um, I went into the graphic design program here initially. All these students have been together with students from other areas, from environmental science, from biotechnology for the first couple of years. And that way, you know, an 18-year-old freshman coming in, some people, they know, I want to do games, I want to do websites. They know exactly what they want to do, but then there's others who don't. And it gives them a chance to get those fundamental foundations, and as long as they get a good skill set for programming and design and project management, then they can take that and turn that into, uh, you know, making software for computers, uh, business applications, they can turn it into websites, or they can turn to this if this is truly what they want to do. Leah, that certainly seems like a college program that's going to attract a lot of students. I think it absolutely will. The times, they keep changing, don't they? <laughs> they do indeed. That's it for this edition of We Are Marshall Today. I'm Leah Edwards. And I'm Dan Hollis. Thanks for watching.